A pretty sweet boat. Under the skin, she's a Hinkley at her heart. This is a unique boat. We were lucky to find it. These boats are not found on every street corner. What a treat. Hi there, this is Captain Koo and my old sailing buddy, Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Yo, Randy! Captain, I recognize those uh, hands. I am here. Here I am, buddy. Yeah, what's going on? We have a gorgeous day. We've got you know, cotton candy clouds and blue sky, and it's really a great day to look at boats. And today, we are not going to look at this boat. I like the bilges on this one. Well, this boat has got a lot of room in her, a lot of volume. This is what we believe under the cover is an island packet. Ooh. And we've had people ask us about these from time to time. A lot. A lot. And we haven't a chance to really get to one, but uh, maybe sometime in the spring when this thing... Uh, yeah, it's on uh, our gets, list. We have a really interesting boat today that comes from one of the most famous boat builders uh, in this country, and that's the Hinkley Company. Oh. Now, this was not built by Hinkley. It was built by A. Hinkley. Mr. Henry Hinkley, who started building boats back in 1929 or so, uh, had two sons. One was Bob and one was Hank. Uh, they both uh, worked for the dad for a while, and then, and then uh, Hank, I think, went off and was, spent some time in the military, and he came back and, and went to work back with dad again. So Hank went off and decided he was going to build um, his own boats. So he, uh, I, I guess, left the company and started ocean cruising. And he, started, and he, and he built two boats in particular. Uh, one was the one we're looking at today, which is an ocean cruising 40, and then he kind of stretched that out the way boat builders like to do, turned it into a 42. And uh, he built uh, 40 of the 40s and I think uh, 10 of the 42s. When we look at this boat, we're going to see a lot of Hinkley-isms. Yeah, so are you comparing this to, say, like a Block Island 40 or a Hinkley Bermuda 40? Bill Tripp designed the uh, Block Island 40 originally, and then some people got together and asked uh, Henry to... to uh, to build a, a spin-off of that, which was the Bermuda 40. The water line on those boats, I think, was around 29 or so on the B40, for example, and the water line on this is a little bit longer. So we might feel a little more spacious in this boat than the B40. Oh. Want to take a look at this? Yeah, yeah, let's check it out. Follow me over. It's right yeah. here. Oh. We just happen to be standing right next to it. How do oh, you like that? What a coincidence. Here is our OC40, as it's known in the trade. She's a fiberglass hull with an AirX core okay. to it. And they chose that because the fiberglass uh, can crack, but the AirX will, will give, but will snap back out. And of course, then there's an inner layer of glass on the other side of the, of the AirX. So uh, it's, it makes for a very strong composite hull. And when we get on board, you're gonna get that very down east feel to the, the construction, the layout. What do you mean by down east? Down east is a phrase uh, used in Maine for a million years, and it has to do with the prevailing winds, which come from the southwest and sort of blow down along the coast of Maine. The coast of Maine actually runs almost east-west. Tell me about the bow shape here. Look at the nose piece on there. That's, I, quite possibly, uh, Hank went off and got his own casting, but that certainly looks like maybe he called Dad and, or his brother and said, could I borrow a couple of nose, give me, nose pieces? Give me a spare if you got one. And they blend in beautifully with the tow rail on the side of the boat and also merge right down into the stem here. We have a musher here? We have a, we have a pretty good musher. This boat's a 20,000 pound boat. So this is all lead right here, back about, oh, uh, somewhere somewhere about in this area here, okay? And then there's an encasement here of, of fiberglass that holds the bronze uh, centerboard. Now we have a hole in the bottom of the boat here, and that just shows you how deep the uh, sump is in this boat. She's got nice, comfortable builds. There's nothing radical about the boat. The fuel tank is down into this keel area too, up in the area forward of the engine. The bottom paint, I, it was funny, on the other side of the boat, it looks really good. Uh, here, when I came around to this side, you can see where the layers are, are, are starting to uh, chip off here a little bit. Soda blast, right? Yep. Let's get it off, spend the bucks right up front, and I think we're looking at original gel coat here 
in the uh, yeah. Like could the, be paint. I don't know. You I like the double tell. boot top? Yeah, I think it's kind of cool. What do you think? Yeah, it's kind of dressy. Coming aft, we've got a, a three-bladed uh, propeller in an aperture. We've got this great big heavy-duty skeg for it right now uh, to protect it from anything that's going to come up in logs. They're going to pop off, whatever, and come back and hit you. This massive, massive rudder here. It's a big barn door, and this is right off of B40, practically. This was uh, hull number one we actually have here, which is kind of fun to see. Uh, and the boat's name is Astrea, but she's tucked in here a little bit. Remember, this came out in 75, 1975, just, you know, when the IOR is, is starting to go, which had the, all the little tucked in sides. But she just has normal top sides here. I'm going to call it normal. They're not flat, but they're not massively loaded with tumble home on them. The boat should track very nicely with this long, long keel on her much longer than some of the other things we're seeing. Yeah. She only draws 4.4 feet right now. Wow. You'll like this, we have a nice uh, rub rail oh, yeah. uh, for the boat and uh, it appears to be fiberglass, uh, which we haven't seen. Usually those are, are yeah. wood. And just below that we have... Ah, red cove stripe. A red cove stripe, which matches our wet stripes down here. You think it's time to go topside? I think it is. Let's head on up. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people, and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing. So every little bit helps. Thanks again. Come on up, pal. Oh, thanks. This may be an OC40, but I feel like I'm on a Hinkley. And I guess I am on a Hinkley. Everything about it is, is, is so beautiful. I'm back in this cockpit, and oh, I'm going to have a little seat here. And notice the nice curve to this. Yeah, we haven't seen that in a while. No, I don't know when we saw it last anyway, but I'm really tucked in here. Notice this wheel. This is We've seen these done in elk hide. Now, this has been done in, in a, a nylon uh, braided line, but somebody's really taking some time to do this. We have a good old-fashioned Danforth compass here. I love those babies. Look at the side, a big six-inch compass in there. Uh, nice stainless binnacle and uh, our engine controls are right here in front of me. Here's my clutch, and, and the throttle is uh, on the side here. This is a nice older Edson pedestal. Um, meanwhile, back here, uh, we've got two uh, outlets for shore power. Yeah, why do you need two? There could be uh, an auxiliary heating system, okay. a reverse cycle air conditioning unit, and that usually requires a separate uh, circuitry to come on board. That reminds me of the B40 uh, Lazarette. Right. Uh, and this is actually the propane tank, though. And the room for two, uh, these are 20-gallon tanks, I think. And this is something you always see with a, <laughs> these Hinkley boats. The in, inside, the underside of this hatch cover is all varnished. Look at the uh, chocks back here. These are stainless steel castings, and they're big enough to take any size line you want to ever have near this boat. Yeah. And it also, interestingly enough, if you look at this, it actually can go straight out. So if you were towing a dinghy, Oh yeah. Your line would come straight to this cleat and then go straight out there. Uh, we have our yacht ensign out here stern, flying. We haven't seen too many ensigns on board the boats, but there we go. Man overboard uh, horseshoe life ring on this side, uh, close to the helmsman. This is called a life sling, and you open this package up, and there's another flap on the other side here. I'll just take a quick peek at this piece is, goes in the water and the, the uh, survivor in the water, hopefully we call him survivor, is going to put this up around his body, okay? Up underneath his armpits. And then there's a whole bundle of line right here that you let go out to him. And then he can pick up this, put it around him. That line comes back to the boat. When he gets close to the boat, you hook a halyard onto this piece and you haul him out of the water. Don't you grab him with a gaff? No, <laughs> I, I, I think he would prefer that you do not. We have a little locker under the helmsman here uh, with uh, quick access to, um, looks like we have a remote control windlass uh, feature right here. When you think Hinkley, you think detail. Here's a little, little winch handle box right here. And look how it's finished. A nice little uh, teak varnish surround around it. And now, Randy, check out the teak trim on top of the cockpit combing here and on top of the winch base. Notice the size of these drains right here. 
Normally you'd see that down in the footwell, right? Yeah. Well, we actually have some more in the footwell, but right now... Oh yeah, uh, by your foot over here. Yep, there's two of them down there, one on either side, and one up here. And see the little indent here? This is so when the boat's healing over, the water's going to find its way down. It's going to come down and cascade right down here and gravitate and go right out to the sea again. Yep. And anytime on almost any other boat, they don't think about this detail. So water will pool down there and uh, anything gets near it, going to get wet. That's designed by somebody who's had a wet bottom before. Well, I think so. And uh, a nice everything you're going to need at some point locker. Look at the full length handle on here. This is basically what you lift this this up with. Uh, so yeah. you can lift it up anywhere you want along here. You know what this is? Sure do. Huh? Yeah, a little suction to keep you uh, along the hull while you're scrubbing it. Some so I noticed this doesn't go very deep. No. Why do you think that is? Probably a quarter berth. You got it. So nice big clean storage locker with uh, your bumpers down here. You see the couple of latches down here. Can quite see Here's it, yeah. one run here and there's one on the other side that holds a very large panel uh, and that is another access to the engine. Yep. Come on up here buddy. Look, look at this deck. Look at the width of this deck. Why do you care if it's wide or not? Well I care because I want to move back and forth in the boat. You just don't want to be cramped. Now up in the bow here this is just, I'll just have taken the whole picture here, okay? Look at the, look at the nose piece, this solid stainless uh, casting up here. Uh, look at the fittings coming back here. The chain keep that's set up right in this area here, it needs a pin right now. But uh, stainless steel anchor chain, uh, two really hefty uh, cleats for your bow lines. And again, we have the nice work done on these cleats here that will allow a line to run straight any angle going through there. Heavy build on the uh, bow pulpit stanchions. Uh, they've replaced all the lifelines on here. These originally came with the coated lifelines. What's the capped plate right near your feet? This piece? Another derailed, right. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it'll fit right and screw right in there and give you a whole bunch of air right at the bow. I like the tread on the decks here. It's just pleasant looking. Uh, it's uh, pretty grippy and I like the way they've articulated the, the non-skid around the white trim on the deck. We have a very heavy duty boom. It's got one winch on here probably for the outhaul on the uh, on the mainsail. Right beside that we don't see too many of these anymore do we? Oh. And what is that? Classic spinnaker pole. Spinnaker pole, yes sir. This is actually more of a reaching strut than an actual spinnaker pole. This allows you to adjust this. So if you're going wing and wing and you want that jib way out to the side, then you can probably stretch that and move it. My father had a Hinkley at one time and all this stuff looks like it just comes out of the Hinkley shop. Uh, the nice varnish finish, these huge, huge wind vents, right? And you can turn those around and have the wind get sucked out of the boat or have the wind get blown into it. Uh, and this I always appreciate up here. Please to put the winch handle for the mast, right? Yeah, great. And there's actually, uh, I, we don't, I'm looking at the boom, I don't see it, but I don't see the, the fitting for a hydraulic vang. Yep. So when I see this, I know we've got a, a cloth vang strap. Is that our Freddie Noble? It's his brother Charlie. <laughs> that old captain that first named that, Captain Noble? Yep. He would be very upset with that, wouldn't he? Because it's too small. Oh, it's not polished. Not right? polished. He's going to have a pretty straightforward uh, set of rigging on the boat. If you come down, you look at the hole through the deck for the mast, you don't see any random blocks redirecting lines aft for all the uh, reefing lines and all that sort of thing. You see the main sheet coming back here, and this is for mid-boom sheeting, okay? Yep. Which keeps the sheet and everything out of the cockpit. Wonderful deck, but I want to go below. What do you think? Oh yeah, let's go check it out. Come on down, and welcome to Hank. I'm thinking back to the B40 we were on and how you could you were spread arms and touching the cabin tops or the finger rail there. Yeah. Now, interesting as you say that, because as I do that here, uh, if you subtract the distance between this finger and the wall and this on that side, that's about the seven inches difference in the beam. By the way, I just want to notice how this drawer slides out. It's almost on rollers. Look at that. Put your storage in there. The thing that's different is that the, the face of this drawer is kind of angled. You know? Good eye. One of the problems they have with a lot of boats design and boat work, they just put in the back of the berths and so forth. That's not the way we sit. We want to sit with just a slight 
then the difference between that and this is night and day, isn't it? Now this is going to slide out. Yeah. I'm going to. Th let's take a look at you're that too. Dare, you're going to dare try that. Look at that. You want a comfortable cushion? You notice there's a space here. Miss something missing, right? They pulled the table off because the past owners was taking this out for hourly day sales and they didn't need the table in the way that comes with the boat you get a table with this particular boat this is a paul e luke uh fireplace material on the side is called soapstone something i learned about soapstone is it warms up and it just kind of stays there so it's not overly hot to touch you are the engineer so you would have recognized yeah. that right up and that stovepipe goes out and goes through the head and then up to the deck now the interesting thing about that is that gives you another source of warmth in the head. We've got lots of windows. We've got two opening ports right here in the main cabin. We've got a little grab rail here in case we get tossed around. Now I'm gonna sit down on this side of the boat. Oh, and I may not get it from here, but look how, look at the little piece of woodwork done in here to hold me in. I'm not gonna get thrown out of here. I can just lean right in here. So let's take a look aft, see what else we have in this saloon. Hinkley Galley, everything is oversized. Kind of have a three opening uh, hatch uh, refrigerator. And look at the size of that. And our little bottle is way down, that's like three feet down there. These are very classic looking sliders for Hinkley with the vented uh, doors on them. And it's just a nice looking piece. And uh, same thing here. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Three burner stove and uh, oven. And this has been cooked on, you know, a lot, a lot. And a nice, this, now look at, look how they utilize this space. There's some pot and pan storage right beside the stove too. Yeah, rather than having all stacked up horizontally. They've used this for sort of a first aid section. They were using this boat a lot for day cruises and so forth. So uh, there's a need to have some emergency uh, band-aids and, and so forth. Let's not forget the sink. These are not as deep as I would like them uh, because you do have an engine under there. And you, on the other side, you have uh, a waste bin. And look at the size of this waste bin. We've got two separate bilge pumps here with lights and remotes on it. And we have a fuel tank here, Gage. Yep. Hinkley like to put those on. A lot of people don't see them. They use dipsticks. It's kind of nice to have a gauge, especially if it works. I see right at your feet. The old classic. Uh, this guy, this is your little dustbin. So you just come and sweep the dust through those holes, kick it up here and throw it out. Now, well, this is nice, but it has pluses and minuses. First of all, it's very easy to open up. Now here we have an opening for the engine room. And he's got two separate alternators on here, both your starting battery probably and the house battery down on this. Okay. And there are, um, let's see, four, I think there's four six volt batteries hooked in series uh, to give him 12 volts for yeah. the house. Yeah. And there's another starter battery, which is just a big 12 volt, I think underneath the nav station. Here's your uh, water intake, so you can see that. And then your Raycor up there. And your Raycor's right here in front of you. There's also a big opening back, remember, through the cockpit. On the other side, we have our chart table and quarter berth. All right, you can get an eight foot crewman in there. <laughs> and uh, they've made accommodations all along the side for storage in ventilated lockers. And while I'm here, let's take a look at the batteries for a second. And look how these are all bolted in place. And here's your uh, your whale gusher. Underneath the seat here, you have your engine starting battery. Very convenient, right there. And you have your master switch right underneath that as well. Now let's talk about our chart table. We love chart tables. It's pretty high. I think I'd like a little cushion under my my tush right there, just to elevate me a little bit. Let's see what we have under here. We have this uh, Furuno radar uh, screen right here, and then we have our VHF. And a nice, nice uh, ACDC master control center here. Here we go. Drum roll. Okay, we would give him a, uh, I think pretty much a 85. Yeah, I was thinking the same. That's pretty tidy. You wanna see how this thing works here a little bit? Good job. This is your center board mechanism. Okay. This is a hydraulic ram right here that will push that ram down and that will activate your center board going up or down. Beautiful work under, underneath and out of sight. We've got a, a, a nice hanging lock here and this is good size. And, and one, one problem, this would be a good place for your foul weather gear. These latches are very nice, but they need to be tended. As we've been on a B40, right? Yep. And uh, we've had some thoughts about the head. Look at the size of the head on this boat. Really good size, isn't it? The B40 came out to about here. It has an opening port, which you always need. 
It's almost big enough to do like a separate area for the shower. Well, you could. You almost and, have enough space for that. And I certainly think a shower curtain would be appropriate in here. Uh, here we got our just our line for the the uh, head holding tanks and so on, and a place for laundry. And here's our grate going right down to one of your favorite little um, shower sumps. Some shower sumps, right? Yeah. And right beside me is uh, a nice stainless covering uh, for the fireplace chimney. I, I do see one issue. Okay, where is it? Well, it's the size of the mirror. Oh, the mirror? Yeah. A little small. It's but not... it's the right height, though, isn't it? Yeah. You're going to need more. Ah. Here we are forward. And look what we have here. I love these. Uh, Solid, solid uh, uh, Lee board. Lee board. It's here to take the V birth filler. Right, me here. Oh, it is. Oh. We've got two opening ports and a really big hatch right overhead here. I'm going to show you what's under. I bet there's a. I bet that sometimes you find a compass under here. Really? Yeah, because it's. It will be that's the. That's what you're betting. It'll be the. That's going to be my bet, and that's the compass that will activate the autopilot. Oh, gotcha. But in this case, let's see. There isn't one. See these two little fittings right here? Yeah. You flip that over to the side, and this one over to the side, right? And you can now pull out this screen. Uh, oh, I think I know, yeah. All right. And this screen is going to go, has two little pins here. So here's one pin, here's the other. Yeah. And you can't see them, but there's two uh, matching holes up there. And you put that right up, boom, like so, and you will have that is, screen. is that, that is that sweet oh, we have a chain locker for it as always and if i open that door we're going to see some chain and we're going to see some rope and i'll tell you we're going to see some stainless chain too because that's what they have on board here but look at the forward part of these berths not much point to them is there i think we should try this i think uh yeah we got to see the measuring stick we're, we're going for it oh oh yeah no this is this is really good. Okay, I'm going to spend some time here, Randy, as usual, yep. but uh, thank you for taking the time to follow me around the boat. You might be part Spanish with all these siestas. Si, si, senor. Boy, you get on this boat and you think you're on a Hinkley. And price on this boat is pretty remarkable. I was really pleased. I just thought I was on, a, on, a, on a, a, an older Hinkley. Yeah. The decks, the chrome, the finishing, the, the chalks, the nose piece, uh, the, the way everything slid and worked down below, uh, the drawers, the size of the refrigerator. The fact that in this boat too, uh, remember when we were on a Bermuda 40, they didn't have a quarter berth. Yeah. And they didn't have a chart table. Uh, and the head. How, where did he find all the room in this boat? Hank was really a genius at figuring this out. So um, what a treat. And these boats are not found on every street corner. So this is a unique boat. We were lucky to find it. I've got a question for you. Uh, and the question is? How would you rate this boat? Oh, you know what? This is going to be a pretty hefty rating, I think. Because I'm, I'm thinking this 40-foot range in my life. And these are ratings, remember that are for the captain to find the last boat, right? So she's a floater. We give her a 10. Boom, right there. Uh, she's really under the name, under the skin. She's a Hinkley at her heart. Okay, everything is beautifully done. I kind of like the idea of the shoal draft. I've lived with eight feet of draft with the PB. That was fine. But I like the four foot of draft, and I could, I could really have some good time with that. I'd especially take it down to the Bahamas. We got stuck with our five feet of draft in the boat we went there with last. So the draft, the build, the name. Uh, I'm going to give it another 25 right off the bat Ooh. on top of the 10, so which is 35. Perfect. And she gets one more for oh, the tidy nav station. You remembered. We always forget that, but she's getting one point. So she's at 36 and uh, I don't know. I might make a trip to the bank on this one. This is a pretty sweet boat. Anyway, we had a great time here. We look forward to coming visiting again. Yeah, seeing someone splash this one in. Oh, now you're really teasing me. <laughs> Could be you. You're teasing me. If you like what you see, 
please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes. A little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>